Let's be turning to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Now, when our Lord had preached the parable of the sower, we looked at that last week, there were four lessons that were taught to us that came through regarding the salvation work of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. First, in God the Father, we see that he chose a people to be gracious to. And, and it shows us that we're dependent upon God's grace. We're dependent on God to give us an understanding of his word and an understanding of salvation. And two, we saw that the word that we preach is Christ. We're to preach the gospel. As we saw in verse 1, when Christ went through every village and city, he went preaching and showing the glad tidings of the gospel the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. The glad tidings are the gospel, the good news. And it, that is Christ. We preach Christ. And three, we saw the gift of the Holy Spirit is given because our Lord tells us, he reveals to us that we must be born again. Well, if we must have anything for salvation, then it's God who gives it. Otherwise, we wouldn't have it. And so he gives the Spirit who gives us a new birth. And four, continuing on with that work of the Spirit in us, he shows that he gives us the patience of faith by which we endure unto the end, and we in him bring forth fruits, fruits of righteousness, fruits unto perfection. <clears throat> so, don't lose sight of these truths now when we come to the next thing that our Lord does for, what, and, and the next thing that our Lord says. So following his parable, the parable of the sower in the first 15 verses, our Lord adds these words in relation to that parable. Verse 16 through 18. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Take heed, therefore, how ye hear. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. <clears throat> now, I want you to understand as we begin looking at these words, these are encouraging words. These are words of encouragement to the new man, formed in you by the grace of God. These are not discouraging words. These are encouraging words. And I want to show you that these are words of of encouragement, that these are words full of grace, full of the grace of our Lord, which is given to you that have ears to hear. <clears throat> so, recall that our Lord had just said in verse 10 of this chapter, verse 10, he said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. And so our Lord is revealing to his disciples, you that look to Christ, you that follow Christ, what he's making known is that the, the revelation of God is given. It's a gift which God gives to his people. And he's telling us it's a mystery. It's a mystery to us otherwise. Unless God gives us an understanding, his word remains a mystery to us. It, 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 it lays under darkness because of the veil that's over our eyes and our understanding by, by nature in Adam because we're born in sin, 
born in, in, in sin there. So our God, it's a mystery, but he gives it, the, the understanding and the knowledge of, of salvation in the face of Jesus Christ. And so this word of our Lord in verse 16, I want you to under, understand this is an encouraging word. It's an encouragement first to his church, uh, this body of, of, of local believers here, his church, and, and it's an encouraging word for us to make known what the Lord gives us. And second, it's an encouragement to sinners to tell us that our God is publishing, he's revealing the mystery of God from the preaching of the church. He's making it known in the preaching of his word so that it's not a mystery to you that are sinners in need of his grace. He'll, he'll teach you. Our Lord said, ask, seek, knock. It'll be opened unto you. You that, that need him, he will reveal salvation to you. So listen again to what he says. No man, verse 16, no man, when he hath lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it, the candle, on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see. And what our Lord is saying is, if rational man does this, right? No man lights a candle only to stick it under a hidden thing and hide it away. Well, if rational man knows to do this, then you can be sure that God the Father, who gave that man that wisdom to make sense of things, that God himself is doing the same with his light. This is speaking of what the Father does with the light of the world. All right, this is speaking of what the Lord our God does. This light speaks to the graciousness of God in sending Christ into the world. All right, what does that mean? Well, why is Christ called the light? Because Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ makes known the things of God. He reveals, like a light reveals what's in the room, so Christ's coming reveals the things of God to the people of God. He makes it known. The light being spoken of here is Jesus Christ. Christ is the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Christ is the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. God the Father is the one who sent Christ into the world. Is he not? God the Father did send his Son into the world. He is the light. And this, you flip back to, to Genesis chapter 1. Go ahead and do that. Genesis chapter 1, we see there that right in the beginning of creation, God gave light to this dark world. When he said in, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God is, is, is what we've, we've said this many times, but when he shone light on this world, it reveals, it tells us God has a gracious purpose for a people that he creates and puts on this world. When he brings a man into the world, and it's his purpose to be gracious to that one, he brings him to Christ, he reveals Christ. He reveals himself to us through the Lord Jesus Christ, because Christ is the light of God. And, and it's, it, he has a gracious purpose for us described first here in verse two. In Genesis 1-2, this is us, brethren, by nature. It's true, this, this literally happened, but it's a picture that reveals what we are by nature in Adam. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, waters in scripture is a term used to describe peoples. Right? It has other meanings sometimes, but it, it's used to describe peoples. For example, John, the, the Apostle John, 
<clears throat> he's he he was right well in Revelation 17 15 we're told he saith unto me the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth the whore of Babylon sits upon the people in darkness without form and void right the the, the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues so waters is used to describe peoples peoples all right and and so these waters in this literal creation history it's a picture of people <laughs> of, of people here and it's and so god's grace is shining onto these people god has a gracious purpose here in, in creating this world and in creating his people here in this world all right he has a gracious purpose and so when our lord jesus christ when he came in the flesh he is the light of god shining unto the people revealing unto us who the true and living god is christ makes this known to us he's shining his light upon uh, into the darkness that's in our faces <laughs> he's shining upon us to reveal to us the the light of god and then in genesis chapter one what does he do on, on that was day one that he's shown the light and he divided the light from the darkness on day two he made a firmament he made a firmament and a firmament is you could think of it as the atmosphere right it's the atmosphere that we we breathe and live in here from the ground up to as far as it goes up there we live and breathe in this firmament this atonement this covering without which we have no life but living things dwell in the firmament in the atmosphere that god has created on day two and on that day too by that firmament which pictures the atonement of the lord jesus christ we're told that god divided the waters by that firmament he divided the waters those waters that were under the firmament and those waters that were above the firmament so that by that firmament by the atonement by the redemption of the lord jesus christ he divided the people those that are his those that are not his right here in creation here and he gathers the waters then on the third day he gathers the waters <clears throat> under heaven those redeemed together to one place to one place those waters were gathered together one place and what did that do it revealed the body of land it revealed the body so that now suddenly after the atonement after the redemption a body a form now appears there was darkness then there was light <laughs> there was no form and now there's a form that appears by by our lord's atonement that gathers the waters together in one place and the body appears and then that body of land which was void barren fruitless well he made it to spring forth unto life so that there were trees and plants and living things fruitful things nourishing things fruitful things on that body so that now it was no longer void and so you see that picture right, right there and that was on on the third day that 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 the land that the body became fruitful and what happened on the third day our lord and savior rose from the dead and gave gifts unto men so that we became fruitful in him that's all pictured there just there on the first three days there of of creation of what our lord accomplished for us by going to the cross and laying shedding his blood for his people and rising again from the dead on the third day it's a beautiful beautiful picture and so christ has now come he is the light of men and he's there right now when when he's talking to these disciples he's there to accomplish those works which the father sent him to accomplish in sending the light that is his redemption right his primary purpose there is to is to redeem his people given to him to separate the waters if 
by his atonement, by his, by his death, and then by his death, second, that he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. John 11, verse 52. And a body he prepared that is good ground, good ground, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirtyfold. It's all there. It's all there what our Savior has done by his redemption work, by, by faithfully doing what the Father sent him to do. And so our Lord now says that God his Father did not send the Son, verse 16, into the world to cover it with a vessel or put it under a bed, but setteth it the light on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. So what he's saying here is, I'm come right now, I'm talking to you in parables, and I'm only revealing it to you right now because I'm come to do the work that my Father sent me to do, which is specifically, I've got to go to the cross. I can't make known everything to all the people because I must go to the cross for my people. And so when I speak in general, it's a complete parable. I'm not even explaining to them the things I'm telling you, he says, at this time. I'm just, leaving, I'm just putting it out there, this parable of the sower there, without any explanation. It's a complete parable to them, to everyone except those that the Father has given me right now, to make known immediately to you what, 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 what I'm saying here in these words. But Christ is saying... I'm not going to tell it. I'm not going to speak plainly to everyone right now, right now. But because I've got to, I've got to go to the cross to, to redeem my people. And, and what I'm trying to get at is what Paul said to us is, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known why Christ was come, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of Glory. And if Christ isn't crucified, if he doesn't lay down his life and shed his blood, we have no atonement. We have no firmament. We have no, no redemption in which we live. We wouldn't be alive. There would be no salvation if Christ didn't lay down his life on the cross. But what he's getting at here is once the redemption work is finished, he will rise from the dead and then he gives his ascension gifts to, to men, to his church, to his people, to then make these things known plainly to the people, to declare what Christ has done, why he came, why he had to come, and what he accomplished for his people. So that's what he means when he says, no man, this is, if you don't do this, you can be sure God doesn't do this. He's not sent me a lighted candle to only cover it up and put it away and hide it away. But he sets the light on a candlestick so that all who come in may see, may see. Now, regarding that candlestick, what does the Lord call a church? A candlestick in Revelation, right? In Revelation, he calls his churches candlesticks, saying in Revelation 120, the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches complete number, a perfect number of churches. And so the church is the candlestick. Christ is the candle. He's the light set on a candlestick. We hold it up so that all who come in may see, may have light, so that you would know what Christ is saying, what, what he's teaching us there. And so then, right, when, when Christ gave his commission, when he was rising again, what did Christ do? He gave the commission to the, to the brethren, to the disciples. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Luke 24, was that 48? Uh, 45. Verse 45. So he opens our understanding. He gives it to the church so that we understand. And we know, oh, this is all of Christ here. This isn't about my works and, and, and our doing. This is about the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our salvation. And we publish this word out to all who come in, all who come to the church, so that you coming in might hear and understand that Jesus Christ is all our salvation. 
everything we need to come before the true and living God, the Father. And so that's why we preach Christ faithfully and why we preach him every time we come together. That's what we're called to do, is to preach Christ because he is the light and he shines in the heart to know who the true and living God is. Listen to 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Remembering what we just saw in Genesis chapter 1 and how we see it revealed in Christ, Paul said, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, who moved upon the face of the waters, shining unto us, those waters that he separated by his blood to be gathered together in one body, a fruitful body in Christ. It's, it's, it, it's beautiful. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I just, it's, just, it's wonderful to see how he does it all, brethren. He does everything, and it's just it's wonderful. Now, let us move on to the second word, and it's very similar to what we saw before. But verse 17, Luke 8, 17, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. And so up to this time, just to... to reestablish this thing up to this time when Christ went to every village and city he spoke to the people in parables so they weren't really sure what he meant or what he was saying there and he didn't share openly the understanding of those parables as we understand it today only to those about him immediately but here he's declaring that this good news of God's gospel he's saying what I'm saying to you right now it's going to be published. It's going to be made known. It's going to go out very plainly to the people. And, and the only reason why it's not now is because he's saying, I'm going to the cross. I've got a work to do. So I'm speaking literally what I hear the Father tell me. That's what he was saying. I speak the words that my Father has given me. I'm not deviating from it one bit, he's saying. So I'm just telling them the parable because... There's a reason for it. They're going to remain in darkness, but you, I'm going to tell you more clearly what, what I'm saying here. And so, but when he did it, when he accomplished redemption, laid down his life, died, was buried, and rose again, and gave gifts to the church, gave the church an understanding of what he just did, then he sends his church out to bear witness and tell the people that through this man, the Lord Jesus Christ has preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Not your works, not your doing, not your creeds, not what you think it is. It's not. Look to the servant of God. Look to the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the very salvation of God given for your salvation. And all who believe in him shall not be ashamed, and you shall never perish in your sins because Christ has put away your sins. He's accomplished it. The work is finished, he said. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It's finished by the Lord Jesus Christ. He's everything, brethren. All that we need. It's all through him. And so the church now is called to make this witness of the Lord known to the people. All who come in, and we just hold up the light so that all who come in may know it's Jesus Christ. Look to him. Look to him. He is salvation. Believe him. He is sufficient to the uttermost to save the vilest, most wretched, worthless sinner. Christ is able. And so if he's able to do it for the most wretched sinner, he's able to do it for anyone else, for their sin. But we come as filthy sinners. We come as mercy beggars seeking God to have mercy on our soul in Christ. In Christ. That's how we come to God. Believe him, brethren. Trust him. He's our message. He's the light of the people. And he makes known the Father, the true and living God to us. By his grace and power, by his spirit. Listen to these scriptures which describe the gospel that we preach. I'll just give you two. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ 
and stewards of the mysteries of God. Right? This is the message. We're, we're come to make known to you the mystery revealed to us in the face of Christ. This is that God is saving his people by Christ. Always has, always will. That's how he saves his people in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then again, Paul affirms this, that when we preach, it's Christ. He said, 2 Corinthians 2, 17, For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. What is it to corrupt the word of God? To take your eyes off of Christ and tell you, now you've got to get doing. You better start doing this and doing that and straightening up and fixing this and stopping that and saying this. And we don't say that. That's corrupting the word of God. No, we're, we're preaching Christ. We're preaching Christ. But as of sincerity, Paul said, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. In Christ. Because that's your salvation. That's who saves. The Lord Jesus Christ. He saved and is saving right now through the preaching of the word as it pleases him. To lay it to your heart. And when he saves, he's, 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 he reveals faith that looks and believes that Christ is. Yeah, he did it. I'm his, and he is mine. He did it. So understand that it's not the act of hearing preaching. I mean, we are to preach, and you're to hear it. Because uh, the faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But the power is not of me. It's not because I'm standing here preaching it to you. It's because the Spirit of God makes the word effectual in the hearts of his people. That's why we're to hear it. This is how the Lord is pleased to save his people and teach his people and feed his people and nourish his people in the preaching of Christ and the, the candlestick just holding up the light. That's what we're to do. We're commanded to preach the word of God, which is Christ. And that mystery is revealed in us by the Spirit of God. God taking the things of Christ, the Spirit taking the things of Christ and showing them to you, making them effectual in your heart. Therefore, Having said that, our Lord gives us a word, and this word speaks to his people with power. Verse 18, Take heed, therefore, how ye hear. For whosoever hath to him shall be given. <laughs> be encouraged, you that hath, it more shall be given. And to you who have not, whosoever hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. And what our Lord is teaching here is that he's going to reveal them that are his. This is him, them that are his. Now he gives a warning to all, right? That's how the word in parable form is heard right now. Take heed how ye hear. And left to themselves, men are going to run and scurry of what they think that means. But those that are his are going to hear. They're going to take heed how they hear. I don't believe that what God is saying here is that if you deal righteously with God and you try and listen real good, then God will deal righteously with you and he'll give you what, what you're, you're bartering for, what you're looking for. If, if our salvation rests in us doing a righteous work first, we're doomed. I'm doomed. Cannot produce a righteousness for God to then be righteous to me. Because that wouldn't be grace, it would be wages. And that we'd have earned it. And we know <laughs> that we're all sinners and cannot earn the grace of, of God. We can't work for salvation. And so if it would if it depended on me and you doing something first, we would die in our sins. We would come short of the glory of God. <clears throat> and so the thing is. As we heard in the parable, without the grace of God first, we're going to hear this word unprofitably in one of three ways. The first way was, was that it would fall on hard ground. Right? It would fall on hard ground, and, and when we're just hard in our sin, we just trample upon the word that we've just heard. We just trample upon it, run right over it without any care of what we've just heard. And then the devil, the bird, just comes and takes that word away, and it's of no profit to us. That's one way that people hear. The other way is that some of that seed falls on the rock, on, on, hard, on, on a rocky ground. And our Lord tells us that when the sun rises up, that 
that little sprout of a seed of, of a plant there, it withers under the scorching heat because it has no root. It doesn't have Christ, the root, in, in us. And so we would die without that, that root. And that sun pictures the, the, the persecution, the hardships, the difficulties that come, the opposition that comes. You lose your job, your car breaks down, your, your, your spouse leaves you, whatever it is. There's all kinds of things that, that come. Somebody you think would hear the gospel says, you're a fool, you're an idiot, get out of here with that stuff. That's nonsense, don't believe that. Or, you know, or they even physically assault you. you know, when, when you're trying to talk to them, they just don't want to hear it. They don't believe it or whatever. There's many ways that people get offended by the word. And so they wither and die if they don't have Christ in them. And then that third way that man hears it is they, they may be in, in the truth for a long time. And they may seem to begin to bear some fruit in it. But before that fruit comes to perfection, that word gets choked out in them. They start caring more about this life. They care more about the, the, the deceitfulness of riches. They start just, just doing normal things in life, and that word is made unprofitable to them so that they stop hearing it, and they never bring forth any fruit. No fruit at, at all. It, as Christ said in verse 14, they bring forth no fruit to perfection. So you see it. You see the beginnings of it. You think that something's going to be there, but the bloom falls off. It rots. It gets... I don't know, taken by a squirrel, it gets ruined, it gets eaten, falls off, wind blows it, all kinds of things. It just gets choked out and it dies, being unfruitful. But to those with grace, they hear the word. They hear it as, as a, well, those, I'm sorry, those without grace, it always just remains a parable to them. And it'll be one of those three ways because they have not the grace of God in them. Today we may have a little more understanding than people had back then in the cities and the towns because we have the Bible and we can flip forward and see what he, how he explained it, but it still will be unprofitable to us. It'll still be heard as a parable, just like Judas heard it, because Judas was there and he heard all those things and it was unprofitable to him. He died in his sin. But to those to whom God is gracious in Christ, they will hear the word and they will take heed because he gives it to his people. They, they will hear that word and take heed. They'll seek to be present, to hear the word preached, as he says in verse 15, in an honest and good heart. Right? We, we try. We don't, we don't take lightly missing the word. We want to be here. We want to be here. And, and the Lord teaches us, instructs us, and he brings us here to hear the word. And they will see God in prayer. I encourage you, and, and I speak to myself, Pray. Pray that the Lord bless the word, that he be present, and make this word effectual in our hearts. Because without his grace, it's unprofitable. It could be unprofitable to me, and I'm preaching it. Without his grace, I'm just as desperate for the grace of God as you are hearing it, that I may hear it also. So pray that we would hear the word and keep it by faith, and that the Lord would make it profitable to bring forth fruit in us profitable fruit that, that, that glorifies his name, fruit with patience. And when he says then, whosoever hath to him shall be given. What he's saying there is to those who have the grace of God in them, they will continue. You will be blessed. You will hear this word. The Lord will make it profitable. You'll go through trials and tribulations. You'll go through setbacks and difficulties and you'll be disappointed in yourself. But God will keep you, and he'll turn your heart, and he'll strengthen your heart, and he'll encourage you and grow you again. It's a patient run. It's a patient race. And we all, I can tell you, I have things that I look back on and, and feel ashamed. And what a, a fool I was. How slow of heart I am by nature to believe all that the Lord, by his prophets and word, uh, by, by his scriptures, what he's told the church. I'm so slow of heart, so thick, so dense, that I just am. And I'm so thankful for his patience with me. And I'm sure many of you are thankful for his patience with you because 
It's a patient bearing. It's a patient grace that, that he's given to us. <clears throat> but to you that have, he's going to keep giving it to you. He's going to keep revealing Christ to you. And when you go astray, he's going to bring you back. He may chasten you. He may keep you from going down that far, but he may allow you, he may suffer it for a reason to let you go further than you think that you should. But in it all, God has a purpose and he's able. And if you have, if you have the grace of God, he will keep you. You will not be let go and depart. And, and you will bring forth fruit to the praise, honor, and glory of his name and glory. And then when he says, whosoever hath not from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have, he's describing those who have not the grace of God. And though they may be very outwardly religious and seem to have a lot of gifts and a lot of things going on for them, the thing is, is without the grace of God, they will die in their sins. They will die, except God be gracious to them. They'll come short of the prize of Jesus Christ because they will stop hearing the word with profit. It'll stop being profitable to them, and they bring forth no fruit to perfection, even if they endure for a long time. So take heed, therefore, how ye hear, because God's people are established by his grace. And so I say that word confidently, knowing that it's of him, <laughs> and we seek him. Lord, help me to hear, to hear this word in, in, in the manner that, that glorifies you and, and brings forth that fruit to your praise because I don't have it in me and I don't have it of nature and you don't either but he gives it he gives it so I pray that he blessed that word I pray you hear that it's, as an encouragement that Christ is a light we have the light of God brethren we have the light and he's made us a candlestick to hold forth that light to bless you to encourage you to feed you to nourish you to keep you so that you don't go off on those other ways. He's given you his grace in your heart so that it's profitable to you. And, and I pray he continues to make it profitable to his children. Amen.